on that. Here I am in Brussels. Supposing you, you got in a lift, an elevator with, say, three guys, I'll pick names at random, Lord Lawson, Lord Pearson, and Mr. Farage, and you were going up four floors, and they're all climate deniers, climate change deniers. How would you use that 25 seconds? Would you not bother to speak with them? Would you try and convert them? Would you say you're irrelevant, or would you say, why don't you stop? I'm not sure I would think uh, I could persuade them, but I think that people like them should think about the fact when my grandma was born, 1901, we were just about one billion people on planet Earth. My children will be living in a world with nine to 10 billion people. Even if you don't accept the climate science, which I think is odd if you don't do, but if you don't do that, wouldn't you agree that to become more energy and resource efficient, that would be a wise strategy for the world in the 21st century? How can we raise our collective level of ambition with respect to climate change? Go for more. I think that the minute we start to understand that to continue business as usual comes with a price tag, then it might be wiser to spend some of the money in investing in, in a more clever future. And somehow, you know, I had this uh, experience at the World Economic Forum in Davos this year at the traditional leaders' lunch for heads of states and finance ministers and what have you. Jim Kim, the new number one in the World Bank, he was asked to give his view of the state of the economy in 2013. He had 10 minutes. Seven out of those 10 minutes he spent talking climate change. He said, guys, you have not understood. Climate change is not an environment issue. It's an issue how we tackle this will define our economic growth of the 21st century. In the room, you had the IMF number one, Christine Lagarde, echoing exactly the same message. And the whole thing was moderated by OECD Secretary General Guerrier, echoing exactly the same. I believe when the key economic institutions start to understand that climate change is not an environment issue to be parked in a corner, but it has to be sought into our economic growth strategies, then something are starting to move. Are there things we're doing now that we didn't do in the run-up to Copenhagen? I think that what might be different is that we have seen more and more things happening in the real world around us. So in that sense, there are more governments today who realize something has to be done here. I just recently went to the Philippines. We have not even heard about it in Europe. Uh, some days in, in uh, August, 80% of Manila was flooded. It's a city of 20 million people. 20% of the city was flooded like this. We're talking about millions and millions of people living there. They say there, wow, what used to be every 30 year, now it's every year. And it's harming whatever we're trying to do in this city with so many people. So it's just one example that I think that more and more governments start to think about this. Wow, business as usual cost us a lot. Maybe we should engage a bit more in finding an international framework and engage in finding our own solutions. So justice in a way is something which you add on to delivering a fair opportunity for Europeans to live. And so doing good outside follows doing good inside. And so to work, as I understand what you're saying, climate change policy needs to meet the demands of the Europeans and those outside. 
I just said that's a reality if we yeah. do it in a smart way. But that does not mean that we would not in any case have a special responsibility because we have contributed to the problem. goes without saying. I'm just saying it's not yeah. just about, oh, we should give that to others. No, if we are smart, we could improve our own macroeconomics. We can actually create jobs here in this sector more than in so many other sectors. So there are some co-benefits and maybe that would also help globally. If we were not always talking about this as who must take which burden, but also who will have what kind of opportunity. The benefit. Do you think the Doha idea of going for gender balance in various negotiations and representations was a good idea? Is the idea that it puts in the discussion groups that might otherwise be marginalized? Is that the instinct about it? I think it's very important, yes. And I know that that is also part of what Mary Robinson is trying to achieve with her very strong focus also on the gender aspect, but also because we can see that some of those who are coping most with the consequences of climate change and, for instance, lack of adaptation, that will very often be women. Yeah. Do you sort of think it's impossible? If you look at the International Energy Agency report on climate change, 70% of coal reserves should remain unused. 20% of oil and gas should be unused. So enormous is the problem, they say. Look, we have to leave stuff where it is, and yet you've got all these amazing, huge multinationals whose shareholders demand use. Is there some part of you that sometimes says, crikey, that's impossible. This is, you know. No, because then I would not be here. I mean, I still tend to believe that some how mankind is often very, very, very slow at finding the right solution. But normally, if not before, then we are on the brink of something really bad happening, then normally we get it right. And you know, I can sit sometimes and say, wow, my goodness, how, how slow everything is, and all the things you're just mentioning. But then look back five or 10 years ago, where were we there? You would not have 80, 90 countries around the planet with their own climate strategies. You would not have a European system for 2020, and now we're working on 2030. You would not have the 500 biggest companies, CEOs, now really caring about what is their climate strategies. You would not have thousands and thousands and thousands of mayors around the planet actually dealing with what is my municipality, what is my city's contribution. I mean, yes, I think things are moving too slow in the right direction, but they are moving. If I had told you five years ago that China would now introduce a market-based emissions trading system, you would have said, dream on. They're doing it now. Korea has adopted there. California is doing it. I mean, things are moving in the right direction, although too slow. And you paint a picture for me of the world in 2050. Your children are well grown up. You've become an elder statesperson. What's that world going to look like in your opinion? Depends whether we get it right now. It can be an extremely unstable world with a lot of security implications also for us not getting it right on climate change. Um, huge immigration, uh, you know, all the, the con consequences. Or we could have started acting in the scale we need in time so that we actually have a more resource and energy efficient way of creating the growth for the billions who need it. Cleaner air, cleaner waters, a lot of co-benefits could come with it. So I'm not, you know, I used to, to be sort of, a, I, I am a Danish conservative, so, so I'm not sort of once painting a paradise and then I think that you can do that and then for 2050 you would have no problems. Of course you would. But I still think we have a choice. We can define whether it's sort of a more black p picture we have of 2050 or it's only the normal amount of challenges that will be left. Give for. me odds, 50-50, 60-40 in favour of the good. No, I'm not going to, to, to do that. But as, if we can sort of now move on as we have done over the last five, ten years and finally sort of start to get our act together and get the economic community to join this, and that is the new thing that is happening, then I believe that suddenly we could get things to speed with scale. So this, this event, like the Berlin event, of which you know, of course, and unfortunately can't be here because you're in Warsaw, this is, on that analysis, quite an important event. It's very important. And everyone who can come up and show the specific solutions. This is how we can do it. This is how we can sort of get the message across. This is how we can engage business. All that kind of initiatives 
are very much what we need. Also, the many people who will be meeting in Warsaw while you are meeting in Berlin.